Oh, how do you help your child who has experienced childhood trauma, who comes in and out of their faith? How do you help the parents who have so much hate for the perpetrator? Why do people harm children? Uh, it's a million dollar question. Why do people harm children? It's very sad and very sick. There are two kind of people I cannot see crying. It breaks me to smithereens. An old aged person and a little child. Because both of them are helpless. They are in need of someone else's help. Someone is an elderly and gets abused. If I see the abuser, I'll bury them with my hands. And if I see someone abusing a little child, I will put him through a shredder. My blood boils up. May the Lord have mercy on me. But my blood boils up when somebody abuses an elderly and a child. These two are untouchable areas. You cannot. Period. You cannot. So they abuse children and there is a scar for the rest of their life. And obviously the parents, when they see the person who was the reason for their child's current situation, how are they going to forgive that person? It's very hard. It's very hard. We need to pray for the child and the parents, my dear friend. Pray and ask the Lord Jesus to touch their hearts because only God can really comfort their troubled heart and give them the strength to forgive the one who has hurt them and their child the most. Takes God. So ask the Lord for healing for the child and the parents. And if you'd like to give us their names privately, confidential, I'll be more than happy to see you. Or you can come and see me afterwards and give me their names and we will pray for them, you know, without anyone knowing except the Lord Jesus. <laughs> this question is for me. <laughs> I know this is a personal question, but would you be able to talk about your um, relationship with your earthly mother and her experiences with Christ? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can. I still miss her. It was a long time we lived together. She was a wonderful lady. And, a, and an, an awesome mother. She was an uh, absolutely uh, um, devout Christian and very faithful and loyal to her family, uh, to her husband um, also who has departed as well. This so happens to be my earthly father. Um, and uh, she taught us and uh, raised us in the love of Christ. I remember, uh, this I will say, when I was a little kid, um, we are five siblings. I'm the youngest, but I look the oldest. So I'm the youngest. Um, uh, we're five brothers, no sisters. Uh, so when uh, every Saturday evening, my sweetheart, my, holy mo uh, my, my earthly mother, she would come and gather us all, and uh, she would grab her holy Bible which she brought with her from Iraq to Australia. She left everything behind except her Holy Bible, the cross, and an icon of the Lord Jesus, a very small one. She adored the Holy Mother to death. And she raised us in the love of the Lord Jesus and his Holy Mom. So every Saturday evening, she would gather all her children. And I happen to be the youngest one of all. And she would bring her Holy Bible and the Holy Bible. I still have it at, at home with me. It is in Armenian. It is the Armenian language because my mother was fluent in Armenian reading, writing. You would never tell this is an Assyrian person when she spoke Armenian. She would blow my mind away. Even Armenians, 
when they hear, hear her, they think she's an Armenian. And then to their shocking surprise, knowing he is an Assyrian descent, they said, impossible. For you to know this much Armenian, this fluent in Armenian, amazing. So her Bible was in Armenian. So she would open the Holy Bible every Saturday evening without fail. Yet she had a lot of work responsibilities on her shoulders. And she would read and then translate that into Assyrian and then explain as much as she could, as much as she knew, and always said, Jesus is the only one. Jesus is the only way. Let me tell you, share with you. That's okay. Looks like the Lord wants me to share something. Now, my earthly mother adored my heavenly mother, Mother Mary. In our house in Baghdad, it was a double story house. There was a room upstairs. She dedicated the entire room to be that prayer room. She had the Holy Cross, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Mother, and all the saints and the Holy Bible. That room was a room of prayer, of contemplation. Every time she was in trouble, every time she needed help, she would run upstairs and she would spend an hour or two there praying, lighting a candle, and begging the Lord and his mom. Now let me tell you this. This is a true story, my beloved, to those who have ears to hear as the Lord says. We had this neighbor for years. I'm talking about maybe 30 years as a neighbor. Their son was involved in a car accident. He was one of the passengers. The driver was speeding so fast he drove into a tree and it happened to be the side where this woman's son was sitting. He, wa he went into coma, he had a brain injury, and he was in coma for months. The doctors, after a few months, came to the mother and said, your son is dead. Even if he were to recover miraculously, he would have, we would not know, the the impact that happened on his brain he would probably be a vegetable for the rest of his life but he will definitely have a scar and that scar could be very very big it is best for your son to go and not to come back because what a life is he going to have but your son now clinically speaking is dead she came crying to my earthly mother she's a mother and we know what the heart of the mother is when it comes to her children. So she came crying to my earthly mother, begging her. This happened in front of my eyes. Yeah? I was an eyewitness. She said, I'm a sinner. You're a saint. The Holy Mother hears your prayers. She doesn't hear my prayers. You go and beg the Holy Mother. I want her to give my son back to me. My mom... As always, she ran upstairs and she went and knelt before the icon of the Holy Mother. She lit a candle and she prayed, I don't know how long. That night, the same night, the Holy Mother came to my earthly mother's dream. And she said, she mentioned the name of that woman to prove to my mom this is not a dream, it's real. I am the real mother. She said, my mom was saying she had in her hand a head, a human head. She said, take this head and give it to that son. And she called him by his name. And that name is his real name on earth. His name was Edward. She said, take this head and give it and put it on Edward's head. This is a new head. I, Mary, I'm giving Edward a new head. She wakes up. She calls the one and only, yours truly. <laughs> I was the postman. <laughs> Come here, son. Run to the neighbor and tell the mother your son is fully recovered. 100%. And you need to thank the Holy Mother for it. 
Let me tell you, let me tell you this. Within two days, Edward was sitting eating. Is anyone home? I am an eyewitness. My mom was, she had a very deep and genuine love for the Lord and the Holy Mother. Let me tell you one thing. If you think saints are dead, and the Holy Mother is also gone, you are mistaken, my child. You have no idea how the other realm is. Oh, I can assure you, I put my entire, this life which the Lord has given me, I put this life on the line. I will never blink twice. The Holy Mother is so alive, you can never fathom so alive and so awesome so venerated so highly venerated so highly exalted so magnificent stunning amazing 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 mother amazing if it wasn't for the holy mother i wouldn't be standing now and talking to you i would be dead physically she saved me from the mouth of the lion of course, by the grace and the power of her son. Of course. This goes without saying, my beloveds, please. Jesus Christ is the one and only. But hang on. The Lord has, has, a, has a mother and what a wonderful mother he has. He adores his mom. And he has given her great and magnificent blessings. I'll say this knowing it, not just believing it. I saw it with my own eyes. When the Holy Mother comes, Satan becomes a little mouse. He can fight other saints, but he cannot fight the Holy Mother. He is that afraid of her. Why? Because the Holy Mother was so faithful was so loyal to God's plan and to her beloved son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, her son adores her. So when she goes, the son is with her. And when the son comes with her, Satan is nothing but a little mouse. Oh, I tell you what, I ask saints, yes, they come. But when I ask my mom, it's done on the spot. So Edward lived and he got married, fully recovered, not a blemish. The doctors and top doctors were blown away. They said, only God can do this. And who gave the head? The Holy Mother. Just to show us how much Jesus Christ of Nazareth adores his mom. He said, it's okay, mom. I'll get you to take the credit. Because <laughs> I love you. And you have tolerated so many things for my sake, mom. You have endured so many obstacles. You have carried so much burden on, on your shoulders for years and years and years. For my sake, do you think I'll forget this? I will never forget every tear you shed for my sake. I will never forget every hour you spend sitting and watching me praying for me taking me to the temple and bringing me back washing me clothing me feeding me dressing me running from one town to the other from one city to the other from one country to the other to protect me i'll never forget that mother all the sacrifice you made all these years I'll give it to you in the next life. On earth you were a handmaiden, in heaven you will be the queen. You will be the queen. For he who humbles himself before the Lord shall be exalted. She humbled herself before the Lord 
she is now exalted in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Go, Holy Mother. Stunning woman. Mighty saint. The mother of all saints. The mother. Amazing. Are you tired? Come on, come on. Be honest. Um, I work all day every Sunday um, Sunday isn't it supposed to be a holy and quiet day I guess but I go straight to church in the Sunday afternoon am I doing okay for God by working all day on Sunday but you are going to church yes if you're going to church in the afternoon then you are doing okay well, maybe you need to work on Sunday. I don't know what your situation is. Maybe um, the workplace or with, wherever you're working, they are uh, forcing you to work on Sunday. Maybe you have no other choice. If you have a choice, then maybe ask them to relieve you from working on Sunday. But if it's a must and you have to go to work and you rely on that job to provide, then it's okay. The Lord is merciful. But even though you're working and you're still making it to church in the afternoon, well, Thumbs up. Well done. The Lord is very happy. God bless you. Oh, now. There was this controversial topic that I asked the people before going live. Shall we talk about it? Majority put their hand up saying yes. A few people put their hand up and said no. They say majority rules, eh? Majority rules. May the Lord have mercy. May the Lord have mercy on all of us. Even though this topic is already everywhere on social media platforms, so I'm not neither the first nor the last to talk about this, but I pray that I approach this in somewhat slightly different to the way it has been approached maybe so far. And that is what was approved by the Vatican and signed off by Pope Francis in recent times about concerning the LGBT. <sighs> Providing a blessing for those who are in this kind of a lifestyle. Um, I won't dwell on it that much. But one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why we are talking about it now is we have seen in person young Christian Catholics coming to us saying, what shall we do? Do we leave the church or do we stay? I will never, ever encourage anyone to leave their church. Never. Because it's not nice to take people from other flock who are already Christians and bring them to another flock that is Christian as well. What have we achieved? But we can only advise them and we always ask them to pray and stay calm, stay put, Trust in the Lord because the Lord always comes and pulls it through and pulls it together. Has there been church leaders 
that were disobedient to the Lord Jesus in the past? Always. Is it something new? No. Remember, at the time of the Lord Jesus, the high priest Caiaphas, he said, crucify him. He cried out to the public and said, crucify this man. This man, we don't want him to be king over us. We want Caesar. Caesar, who was a vampire, sucking their blood, stepping on them, enslaving them. They preferred the one who enslaved the Israelites over the one who came to set them free once and for all. Amazing. And who encouraged people to be, to fume up and go and crucify the Lord Jesus? The high priest. And the high priest of the Old Testament of the old time is the Pope, the Patriarch, or the church leader of the New Testament. Same thing. Same thing. I'm addressing Pope Francis directly. And may the Lord have mercy on me. But I'm addressing him with absolute love and humility. I'll ask Pope Francis as a small father on earth because we have one father in heaven and that is God. So, my beloved Pope Francis, I pray this message gets to you. I pray this message gets to you. I'm speaking with love and humility, and I don't wish to raise my head up. So I'm going to try to be looking downward. My dear Pope, you hold a very, a very, very influential position. Your success is my success, and please allow me to speak. Your success is my success. In the eyes of the world, you are a Catholic, and I am an Orthodox, but in the eyes of the Lord, we are His children. We are all Christians. These names may differ, but to the Lord Jesus, we are all one. There is no difference. So your success as a Catholic leader is my success as an Orthodox bishop. What makes you happy makes me happy. And what makes you sad makes me sad. Your failure is my failure. And please forgive me for using the word failure. Your failure is my failure. Your success is my success. And this is the reason and this is the way I am approaching this in addressing you, my beloved Pope Francis. But sometimes, not sometimes, but the truth hurts all the time. Or even sometimes. Ever since my beloved Pope, you have signed off on this and you are giving a blessing to same-sex people, not as in marriage, as in a sacramental way, but you are doing it as a blessing for these people who are choosing to live in this kind of a lifestyle. I'm really sorry, dear Pope, but you do not have the jurisdiction to do such an act. You do not have it. Even though you're a Pope. But this is way, way outside your jurisdiction. Because no one is above the Lord Jesus and His Holy Word. No one. If to Saint Peter, if to Saint Peter, the Lord rebuked and said, away with you, Satan, because Satan spoke through St. Peter. He wasn't calling Peter Satan, but it was Satan who spoke through Peter and said to Jesus, far from you being crucified, because the Lord said, it is written about me, I will be crucified. And to a Jewish person, crucifixion is a definite no zone, out of limit. So if Satan spoke through Simon Peter, do you think Satan cannot speak through me or through you? 
Yes, he can. My beloved Pope, I am begging you to withdraw this entire document and plug it from its roots. Because all it has done, it has caused an absolute chaos, an absolute disorientation, an absolute division within our beloved the Catholic Church, let alone Christendom as a whole. Because to the world, we are all Christians. The world, don't say, ah, oh, this guy is a Catholic, this guy is an Orthodox. No, we are all Christians. So they're going to say, look at the Christians, what they are doing. Now we can see within the Catholic Church, bishops going against the Pope and other bishops. Priests talking different things. One says it is okay. The other says, no, it is not okay. So there is already a division within our beloved Catholic Church. The church doesn't need any more divisions, chaos, because we have enough, enough in our place, enough. We don't need any more. A blessing can only be given to someone who is willing to repent and come back not choose willingly to live in a state of a relationship that is offensive to God himself and when it comes to God there is no authority on earth that can override what God has not blessed no one you know one of the old testament prophets by the name of Balaam he was called by this pagan king and he said to this prophet he said come and condemn the Israelite nation curse them curse the Israelite nation he came and said to that pagan king what God has blessed I cannot curse and vice versa my dear Pope what God has not blessed neither you nor I nor anyone can bless because if God opens the door no one can shut and if God shuts the door no one can open and this was the problem of the great flood the time of our father Noah God closed the door of the ark and he flooded the whole globe people outside of the ark came running knocking at the door begging our father Noah please open the door our father Noah his heart was aching from within himself he cried out to them and he said I wish I wish I could open the door for all of you I wouldn't have hesitated not even a split second but the problem my beloveds I didn't close the door it was God was God so when God closes no one can open and when God opens the door no one can close and this is John the beloved in the book of Revelation chapter 4 and he said I heard this voice and I looked up and I saw a door open in heaven that is the door of Christ and when Christ opens the door no one can shut John the beloved let the whole world shut their doors in your face. But when Christ opens the door, no one ever can close the door. So my beloved Pope, God never blessed such a relationship. Therefore, it is outside of every church leader's jurisdiction to bless such a relationship. Outside. Whether you're a Pope, a patriarch, a cardinal, a bishop, I don't care. So we have, we have done something that is offensive in the eyes of God. And what have we achieved? Division within the church and the Christian world. I am begging you, Pope Francis, to withdraw the letter immediately. 
I am begging you. Because at the end of the day, all of us are accountable to give an answer before the Almighty God, who is the only true judge, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And my fear is, I don't want to stand before the Lord and be put to shame. I want to stand before the Lord with my head up and looking into his beautiful eyes and holy eyes. So we cause division within the church for something we cannot bless. When God, when God himself created the human being, he created Adam and out of Adam Eve, he called them male and female. And he said to the male and the female, unite and then have children, multiply, increase and fill the whole earth. God said, I, God, created this human race, male and female, and I blessed this union of marriage between a male and a female. The blessing can only be given to a union in a matrimonial union when there is a male and a female. God can never, ever go against himself and against his word. Therefore, God will never bless a marital union between same sex. Impossible. You know why God can never contradict himself? Because he is holy. Do you know what the word holy means? In the true definition of holiness, it's not someone that does miracles. It's not someone that preys on people and heal them and cast demons out of people. That is not holiness. Holiness is one simple definition. It is the person that is with good character, meaning however that person is before you, he is the same behind your back. Whatever is inside that person is outside of him. Whatever is in their heart is in, on their lips. They don't know how to twist things, falsify things, and have double standards. A holy person, whatever is inside of them is outside of them. We are not holy. Why? Because so many times we have one intention in our heart, but we say a totally different one out of our mouth. I want to chop their head. And when I see them, I say, oh, I love you. I miss you. What a liar. <laughs> but God is holy, meaning whatever he thinks, he says. And whatever he says, he does. He cannot change. It is in his nature, the never changing God. He cannot. So when he says one word, it is forever the same word, never changing. God chose freely willingly yet he is the ultimate sovereign authority over everything and everyone visible and invisible he chose freely willingly through his holiness to create this human race as male and female and give the blessings to such marital bond between a male and a female impossible to bless someone I'm not talking about giving them a sacrament of marriage as you put it in that document. I'm talking about the word blessing. Because God, when he brought the two, he blessed them. That's why they increased and multiplied. Without the blessings of the Lord, there is no multiplication. There is no increase. So who did God bless? Male and female. On the other hand, you cannot bless someone 
that is willingly choosing to live a life God rejects. LGBT is not to do with sin only. If it were to do with sin only, then no one can ever talk and say anything because all of us are sinners. What is the difference between this sinner and that? Nothing. Both are sinners and in need of God's mercy. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is God's mercy. But LGBT is much greater and harsher than sin. It's got to do with It's a crime. It's a crime in the sight of God. It's not only sin. When it comes to sin, all of us are sinners. I can't judge. I'm another sinner, just like them. But it's a crime in the sight of God more than sin. Why? Because LGBT is the abolishment of human identity. The abolishment of the very human identity which God chose to give from the very beginning. God said, this is a male. And God said to the other, you are a female. This is human identity given by God to the man and the woman. You're a male and a female. This is your identity. The moment you come out of that identity, you are no longer in that human cycle or circle. Not. Because when you came to earth, you were a male. When you came to earth, you were a female. When this male comes and says, I don't want to be a male, I want to be a female, he changed that human identity which God gave. Therefore, you cannot be neither a male nor a female now since you abolished the very identity given to you by God. I hope we are listening. I'm not judging. I love the LGBT people. I love them. I'll always pray for them. But I will never, ever bless their lifestyle Never ever accept their lifestyle. Impossible. And I can only give you the blessings as a church leader when you come out of that lifestyle, confess your sins before the Almighty God and repent and come back. Then you can be blessed. But to choose to live in that life willingly, happily, as if it is normal and you expect the church leader to bless you, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy on your beloved church. I wish I had never seen the day our beloved Catholic church taking such an action. I love the Catholic church. I'm trying to be very reserved. Because I love the Catholic Church. That's why. The Catholic Church is my church. Don't talk about the Catholic Church. If the leadership is corrupt, the church is holy. The church is holy. So, I'm begging you, Pope Francis, this document needs to be withdrawn as if it never existed. Because, sorry to say this with humility, you don't have the jurisdiction to give such a blessing. You do not. You do not hold that key. You do not. 
neither you nor me nor any other church leader. I'm not talking about Pope Francis. There is no church leader that can give such a blessing. Impossible. We are living in the end of times, my beloveds. You will see a lot of colors. The Lord pre-warned us. So don't panic. Don't be disheartened. Don't walk away from your faith. Don't walk away from your church. The church is built on the rock. But if the leader wishes not to be built on the rock, that's his problem, not the church. He will have to give an account to the rightful owner of the church, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And all of us. But we don't hold the key to give a blessing to such a lifestyle. We don't. God will not allow it. God never gave it, never will. Who am I to override God's word? Whoa. Now this has gone too far. So to my beloved Catholic, Christian Catholics, keep on praying. Love your church. Don't be discouraged or disheartened. Don't ever walk away from the Lord, from the faith. The Pope is here today, I'm not saying. May the Lord take from my life and add to the life of Pope Francis. And I mean it. May the Lord give me the pains and relieve Pope Francis from all his pains. But sorry, my dear Pope, I love you, but the truth hurts. We need to withdraw that letter, that document, whatever you want to call it. Fetusia Supplican. That's what they call it. Big titles, but unfortunately very empty from within. We need to withdraw that letter, my dear Pope, because it caused a lot of discomfort within our, your beloved followers. It has caused a lot of division within the church. There are, there are bishops in Africa, in Europe, that are in total disagreement and will never accept such a document. And they came out in the public, in public, and said it loud and clear. But it's so sad to see so many other bishops and cardinals in agreement with the Pope. So sad. And priests. And their, and their sort of reason is, ah, oh, well, it's just a blessing. It's not a sacrament of marriage. It's just a blessing. Well, if you're going to bless, so if this couple come to any Catholic priest and say, look, uh, the Vatican has accepted us to receive a blessing from you, and the Pope signed off on it. So we're coming today to be blessed by, the, by, the, by you, dear priest. And uh, while we are being blessed, uh, we, uh, we did, we done some floral arrangements. And, oh, and on the way, we grabbed the cameraman and the video man. It's a blessing. And we decided to make it kind of colorful while we're getting blessed by you. What are you going to say? No. And if you're going to bless this kind of a lifestyle, how about if somebody comes to you, dear Pope, and says, I live with three women and they need blessings. Because one woman, she's got a great brain. The other one's got great hands. The other one's got um, great skills to cook for me. So the three, combination, the three put together is a great combination. I live like a king. Can you bless them for me? What's the difference? You see, we're opening a door we won't be able to close. Once you say yes to this, you cannot say no to the rest. <laughs> I'm trying to be reserved.
May the Lord have mercy. A time is coming, the Vatican City will no longer be in existence. You can take this as a prophecy. You can take this whatever you want to take. I'm saying it with, with very, with a great sadness in my heart. You want to believe me or not? It's yours. But let me tell you this. The Lord is on his way back to clean his house. Now, the Lord does not care you're a Catholic, you're an Orthodox, you're whatever. He, he doesn't even look at that. He doesn't even acknowledge that. The Lord wants your heart. He wants people that will love him for himself, not for what he does for you and what he gives you. He wants you to live him for being Jesus. Because this alone more than suffices to be more than enough for you to embrace. Just for being Jesus. The Lord is on his way back already. He will cleanse his holy church from everyone who is trying to do things their way, not God's way. But the Vatican City will not exist anymore in the future. And this is from the Lord to those who think they are God on earth. There has been too much infiltration in the Vatican City. I want to be reserved. But let me tell you one thing, my beloved Catholic, Christian Catholics. The church has given birth to great saints throughout her history. The church has had great and beautiful leaders throughout her history. Yes. There has been times where it was the dark ages. But there has also been some wonderful popes that came along because the Lord will never be without a witness no matter what time, what place it is. He will always have a witness for himself. When St. Peter's Basilica, and I'll finish it off on this, when St. Peter's Basilica was finished being built, the opening ceremony, there was millions of people that came flooding to watch this historical moment. Inside the basilica, there was the Pope and many cardinals. The basilica, I don't know if you've seen it, precious stones, silver, gold, everywhere. Extremely rich, extremely precious, extremely expensive building. One of the cardinals got up and being so proud of himself. I should put the left hand actually. He got up, not you people. Being so proud of himself and he said, Pope, please let me say this. He said, go ahead. He said, Pope, with absolute confidence, I can say today, the day is gone where I can say, I have no gold nor silver to give you. Now, who was he trying to go against? St. Peter himself. He said, today I can say with confidence, the day is gone where I can say I have no more gold nor silver. Because St. Peter, along with St. John the Beloved, when they went up to the temple to pray, they came through the beautiful gate to enter. There was a paralyzed man placed at the gate, the beautiful gate. They walked in, but St. Peter came back and he said to that paralyzed man, silver and gold I have not, but one thing I have and I give you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up and walk. Gets up on the spot. So this cardinal challenges St. Peter. Pope, Today, look at this magnificent building. Look at this structure. 
Look at the precious stones, the gold and the silver. The day is gone where I say that I have no gold nor silver to give you. But the Lord Jesus has always witnesses for himself, no matter what. Another cardinal gets up from the other side. And he says, Pope, please allow me to address my dear friend. He said, go ahead. He said, my dear friend, and also I'll say this to you with utmost sadness engulfing my heart. I can also say to you, the day is gone to say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. That day is also gone. The moment we became rich with materialism, Christ, we lost. The church became weak. Satan engulfed the church and look what Satan is doing to the church. We need to come back to the one and only, the crown of glory, the crown of our heads, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is neither Catholic nor Orthodox nor anything else. He is simply God revealed in the flesh. Stop this nonsense. We need to come back to the day and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. What is gold and silver going to do for me? It is the blood of the Lamb of God that can only save me. The blood. So I'm begging Pope Francis to withdraw the letter as if it never existed. And whatever happens after that, please call me. Let's let us both be shredded in St. Peter's Square. I'll come and die with you because I know all hell will break loose because there are so many people under the radar. They don't want this to happen. Secret societies, Freemason, Jesuits. So, we draw the letter and let us both die. I'll die with you. I'll die with you, Pope, because I love you. I love you. But please withdraw the letter. And before you withdraw it, just get, get a message to me. Say, come, because there are people who want to kill you in the Vatican. Whatever you do, don't lose the Lord. Lose everything, lose everyone, but don't lose the Lord. We cannot afford to lose the Lord. We cannot. Nothing replaces the Lord. No one replaces the Lord. He's my everything. He's the love of my life. I may be upset with him. I may be angry at him, but he knows I adore him. I may walk away from him, but he knows I love him. Whatever it is, the Lord is the only one. There is no other one but him. Hold on to Jesus Christ. Then whichever church you're in, just hold on to the Lord Jesus. And pray for the Lord to touch the hearts of the leaders. There should have been more cardinals and more bishops opposing this within the Catholic Church. But no church leader has the authority to give such a blessing, period. No one. We cannot go above Christ. He is the head. We are the body. Amen. So we are praying for our beloved Pope Francis. We are praying for our beloved the Catholic Church and all the faithful 
the genuine faithful in the Catholic Church we are praying for all of them we are all in it together your success is my success and your failure is my failure we are in it together we are in the same boat and if the boat is sinking don't argue who is the captain and who is not the water does not differentiate it will swallow everyone on that board but let us put our hands together and salvage what is left and stop the boat from going down we need Christ to stay above water amen amen I pray my beloved Pope Francis will hear this message and I'll pray I'll pray that he will pray for this intention and I pray the Lord encourages him gives him the strength to withdraw this letter immediately all right well it's been four weeks I haven't spoken to you so please don't don't uh, stone me to death it's almost two hours you guys have been here I love it I wish I could keep you as long as I can you know can I say this yes okay thank you <laughs> I don't like it you know when when the church service is done so quickly like a drive-through I don't like that okay why are you in a rush what are you trying to leave the church for what oh you want to go out well let me tell you one thing my dear friend outside is the flood outside is Satan waiting hello <laughs> come on down baby I got you now because you went to church in a rush you were running 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 you were in a rush you want the holy mass service to be 15 minutes come on father don't don't give a sermon for two hours hurry up I don't have the time to sit two hours that is a life sentence for me two hours in the church well you broke the record two hours you've been in the church <laughs> look if you want to come to this good-looking bishop don't expect to leave less than two hours and if you come to the Aramaic Holy Mass service don't expect to leave less than three hours we do here everything old-fashioned baby I don't like drive throughs I leave that to McDonald's I don't like drive through service because when you come here here is the love of your life and when you're sitting with the love of your life the last thing you look at is the time because you don't want the time to take you away from you sweetheart my dear man when you're sitting with your woman do you look at the watch every five minutes no she's my sweetheart I don't want the time to take me away from her this is the way you treat the Lord you come here expect not to leave <laughs> all right Bishop God bless you